hear the word of the Lord from Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall befall you, no plague come near your tent. So far, the word of the Lord. I was excited and scared to learn how to ride a bicycle for the first time. My first bike had training wheels, and I'd become accustomed to pedaling and steering. But now it's time for the training wheels to come off. My dad had come home from work and set about removing the training wheels. And when he was done, he brought the bike to me. John Michael, it's time to ride like a big boy. As I mounted the bicycle, he steadied it while I got on. We'll go slow for starters and I'll stay by your side, he said to me. I was nervous, honestly afraid of falling. But my father's reassurances and presence were encouraging. It took me a couple of attempts, but my dad kept by my side. I'm right here, son. Keep on going. As I pedaled faster and faster, confidence growing within, I found my, myself all alone. My father had let go. He just stood there and watched me. Now he ran over and helped me get back up when I wiped out. He dusted me off, encouraged me to get back on to try again. By the end of the week, I was riding all over the neighborhood with my friends. I didn't even notice when he took my training wheels over to the neighbors and put them on their daughter's bike. I have fond memories of my father. While he often worked long hours and even had to travel overseas for weeks and months at a time, when he was home, he spent time teaching me the things that he knew about. He could be tough and a little rough around the edges, but he was my dad, and he made sure to raise me the best that he could. That's why I've always appreciated what Luther teaches us about God our Father in the small catechism when he writes, Our Father who art in heaven, what does this mean? With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true father and we are his true children, so that with all boldness and confidence, we may ask him as dear children, ask their dear father. Now I know that not all fathers are as near and dear as they should be. And yes, my dad had his issues. But at the end of the day, he loved me and I loved him. Likewise, God, our Heavenly Father, loves us as his dear children. As the Bible tells us, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. This fatherly relationship between God and his people is what the psalmist writes of in today's text. Look at some of the words and phrases he uses to convey both the protective and providential workings of God. Shelter of the Most High, my refuge and my fortress. He will deliver you, he will cover you. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. Elsewhere in scripture, God is portrayed as steadfast and movable, our rock and our redeemer. 
David says of him in Psalm 103, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. There was a story of a young boy who was being tormented by bullies. They constantly harassed him and physically assaulted him, making his days a living nightmare. Across the street, there was an older teen, athletic, big, strong. This teenager cast a long shadow. He took the young boy under his wing. And when the bullies next came around, they were stopped in their tracks by that teen. The bullied boy no longer had to fear his tormentors. He had a protector. He had someone watching over him, someone watching his back. God is such a protector. God has your back. Thus I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. In 2 Corinthians we read, I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That is God speaking to you, to us. It's God's choice. He has chosen you and me to be his own. Even as Paul tells the Galatians, you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Because of God's choosing, we all benefit as we make our way in the world. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by the day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near to you. You will only look with your eyes, and see the recompense of the wicked. In Jesus Christ, you and I are called children of God. We're gathered together under his love and care. Even as Paul declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Does that mean that nothing bad will ever happen to us? No, not at all. It means that when bad times roll around, and they will, God stays with us as we make our way through them. In today's Gospel reading from Matthew 10, Jesus tells us, Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my father who is in heaven. In these are the words of the Lord, we hear the echo of the psalmist. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. Life happens. I think we all get that. Just as the hairs of our head are all numbered, so are the days of our lives. Illness, injury, insult will all fall upon us. But we do not face them alone. We have that protector who chases away the bullies. We have that father's hands that steady our bicycles so that we can pedal down the way of life. By the grace of God revealed in Jesus Christ, we have life under the shadow of the Almighty. Thus we heed Peter's advice when he says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. We understand that God is not the author of suffering in the world. That is the product of sin, both ours and the sins of others. The Bible reminds us the wages of sin is death, but 
The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The metaphor of God's protective and providential care is that of the shadow of the Almighty. Specifically, he will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. You know, here in North Carolina, there's little difficulty finding shade on a hot, sunny day. There are trees all around us. If the sun is beating down on us, we just go find a tree and enjoy the shade it gives. But in the lands where the Bible was written, that is not true. Much of that region is arid and hot and dry with very few trees to climb under. And it's in that type of a harshness that God extends his arms and offers, offers refuge in his shadow. The heat is still there, but there's a little respite and relief from the sun. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. As I take my leave from you and move toward an uncertain future for Laura and myself, I commend you for remaining in the shelter of the Most High, found where he comes to you, both in his holy word and in the sacraments, which are his gifts to you. Now we may part ways, but we're not alone. For God is our refuge and fortress, made sure and certain with the cross of Jesus. With Paul, ours is a certain faith and hope. What then shall we say to these things? God is for us. Who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Truly, this is our hope as we live our life under the shadow of the Almighty. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Would you please rise and join me as we confess our faith?